Welcome to the Stronger, Lean and Lighter show. This week, I'm your host, Sally Tebow. This week, I'm going to be sharing the five foods that will block you from releasing that visceral fat. And I have some really, really kind of aware, shocking research to share with you at the end. Go. <laughs> Let's start that all over again. <laughs> I've been so steeped in research for the last 48 hours and um, in preparation for this show. And, and you, you know when you have those moments where you're deep in research, looking at all sorts of things to present to you, of course, um, information that can really help, and there's an aha moment. Have you ever had one of those oh, my God moments? I'm going to share that with you at the end of the show and um, why all of this suddenly make sense um i'm still i'm still in, i'm still kind of just it, when it all came together um earlier today i was just so amazed so um incredible just but before we start big shout out to our sponsors uh naos cosmetics wonderful jen hines uh has created a fabulous product i want to share with you today one one i love which is their foundation now the reason i love their foundation is not only is it non-toxic and got stuff in that's good for you, but it's when you when you put it on, it sits on top of your wrinkles, doesn't go into it. So we all want to look younger, you know, like a little any little bit helps. And of course, in partnership with the wonderful new skin brand, these this is called their wrinkle line. And I have so many people now asking me, what are you doing? What are you doing? And it's this. So if you want to know more about this, send me a, a, a message. This is amazing. This is just, I feel like I'm reversing aging. Love, love, love it. All right, let's move on to what I want to talk to you about. And we're going to be talking about, in particular, you know, if you've been watching the show for a while, remember when we're talking about visceral fat, you know, not about releasing weight. We are focused on releasing visceral fat. Why? Because visceral fat is a key element in all sorts of uh, issues around our health, but in particular with this particular virus that's going on at the moment, those with higher rates of visceral fat are, are subject to 132% um, more likely to end up in ICU um, and rates of um, death quite high. So let's talk about visceral fat, shall we? What is visceral fat? Well, best way to describe it is subcutaneous fat is kind of squishy you know you can kind of grab it um people talk about love handles you might uh, have it on your butt and your thighs which is where i carry my subcutaneous fat and really there's not you know a lot of issues around the subcutaneous fat in fact subcutaneous fat is actually good for you uh in in terms of if you are unwell if you become unwell the body will draw on that subcutaneous fat to kind of keep you going so it's nothing wrong with a few extra kilos of subcutaneous fat but visceral fat is not healthy fat it actually wraps itself around the organs in your body now visceral fat has been linked to coronary heart disease stroke cancer dementia diabetes depression arthritis obesity and What's going on right now? So what I'm going to share with you is the five, she says five, five foods that you really need to be wary of. This is not about never having them, but be wary of them. That's what I'm going to be sharing because if you're having these foods, you're actually gaining visceral fat all the time and you're not releasing it. And um, as you know, our health is our responsibility. If you choose to make choices about your health right now it has to be your responsibility it doesn't matter whether you get the jab or you don't doesn't matter but it's still your health is your responsibility so i'm going to go through the five and the one at the, the last one i think is the one that's the real aha moment for me and i will share that at the end so um if you're listening just say hi and let me know if you, where you are where you are today gorgeous day in the gold coast absolutely beautiful weather we have we're we're summering and I know for many people in the in Victoria, you're not summering. Sorry. 
That's why we live here. All right, let's look at number one. Number one, be wary of products listed as health foods. There's so much, you know, that label, that label, health foods, you know, can can hmm, can kind of override a lot. We tend to pick up things because we think they're healthy. But here's an example of how we can be duped with so-called health foods. Um, number one is a popular smoothie brand. I won't say the name. Mango Magic, it's called, but it's you know you can find it all at all the shopping centres. Uh, a regular size smoothie with mango, it's good for you, right? Has six point sixty seven point seven grams and fifty nine, almost sixty grams of sugar. Now we should only be having you know about twenty odd grams of sugar a day. So one of these so called health drinks can really impact an amount of sugar that is pertained in the body. And, you know, you, you think you're doing the right thing. I'm a, I'm a Nazi label reader. I read the labels on everything. You know, and I, when I go shopping, I'm looking at the labels all the time. In particular, you want to look at uh, how much sugar is in things. And also, if you've got names on that thing, you can't pronounce. It's not going in my body. Like, I don't know what that is. That's that's got a long name like this. Sounds like a chemical. It's not going in my body, even if it's got a health food on it. Um, so be very mindful of that. <laughs> hey Tracy, suffering in the heat. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit warm, isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, so be careful of the of the things that are say that they're healthy. And part of all of this, of course, is being responsible for what goes your body. Okay, staying on the same track, we're talking about foods that that you, if you're having them, you just will not be releasing visceral fat, and that's what we need to be doing, is sweet drinks. And these come, you know, not only the um, soft drinks, but things like um, energy drinks um, and often, uh, uh, you know, you can buy iced teas, canned iced teas. Now, a 2020 study by the European Journal of Preventative Cardiology found that long-term consumption of added sugars and sugar-sweetened beverages were associated with higher levels of visceral adipose fat. So those foods or drinks that you think are, well, a little bit of sugar is not going to help, it's lay, hurt. It's going to lay down that visceral fat. Um, you want to be thinking nutrient-dense, nutrient-dense. What am I eating that is nutrient-dense to fuel my body? Number three, and this you'll see where this crescendos in a minute. So number three, refined carbohydrates, commonly found in baked goods, including cakes, biscuits, donuts, white bread and rice. Now, what was the first thing that many people wanted when we first went, this all first started in March 2020? Bread, cakes, people started to eat those things. Now, the, the reason for that, as I've mentioned on the show before, is those types of foods create a boost for serotonin in the brain. So when we're stressed, we're looking, our brain naturally goes searching for those serotonin boosting foods, which of course, baked goods, cakes, what did everybody do? They started to bake cakes and biscuits and like donuts, you know, and of course there's a big thing right now, you know, the gluten-free donuts. It doesn't necessarily mean they're healthy for you. They contain this refined carbohydrate. It's going to lay down that visceral fat. All right. So number one, look at remember this, okay? Refined carbohydrates, baked goods, cakes, uh, biscuits, donuts, white bread, white bread. Think it remind, and you'll see how this all comes together in a minute. Number four, common types of processed meat, including sausage, bacon, ham, and smoked meat. And of course. Again, bacon's one of those things that people, a lot of people have been eating lately because, you know, it's because that, oh, it just kind of reminds me of home and it gives you that kind of, you know, that, you know, that feeling of calmness. It's what happens when people have too much bacon, processed meats, ham, smoked meat. Um, it causes, it has advanced glycation in products and what that, do, now, our body naturally will release those. We have a system in our body that releases but if you're eating a lot of them, ham, hamburgers, not the ones to make at home, but you know where I mean, in the fast food places, causes oxidative stress and inflammation, again, that will increase that visceral belly fat. 
So you want to be very mindful of the types of foods that you're ingesting, um, especially when it comes to these types. So let, I want to go over that again. So what, the first one is um, oh yeah, foods that are listed as health foods that often are high in sugar and may have um, oils that are not natural oils. Just be very mindful of anything that says health food. I always, I always think it's funny. You know, when you go into the supermarket and there's half an aisle that they call the health food aisle, I think, oh, it's the rest of the store. Not health food. You know, the one that costs a fortune, actually. <laughs> go down that little, you know, it's a, only a half an aisle and, and it's just full of very expensive foods. But watch what there's in them. What re, Don't just pick things up thinking they're health, especially things like granola bars, protein bars, all that stuff, anything that's kind of manufactured. Uh, and, of course, you know, things with high sugar in them, sweet drinks, refined carbohydrates, and um, processed meats. Now, the next one, which for me was the aha moment when I started to look at this, and this is industrial seed oils, often now referred to as vegetable oil. So things like canola, corn, cottonseed, soybeans, safflower oils, sunflower oil, peanut oils. And are, according to Dr. Chris Kesser, Kresser um, from the US, they are an evolutionary mismatch. They're an evolutionary, in fact, so our body can process fats such as olive oils and avocado oils, uh, macadamia nut oils, those, those, the, literally those oils that come from, you know, olive oil. You know, I, um, last night on the ABC was a phenomenal show on um, aging well. And one of the things they talked about was, um, the Mediterranean diet with so much olive oil that it's actually very good for your heart. But I want to share something with you. Not only are industrial seed or commonly called vegetable oils linked to visceral belly fat, but also asthma, autoimmune disease, cognitive and mental health and heart disease, IBS, inflammation and infertility. All of these have been linked to industrial seed oils. And I want to I share with you a story and bear with me on this one because so where did these industrial oils come from? Where did they become so popular? Where where did they come from? We we you know we prior to about the nineteen forties, um, we used pork fat, belly fat, oh, belly fat, pork fat, um, animal fats, butters, all that type of thing. So somewhere it switched. Now let me share with you a story. In the night in the eighteen seventy in Cincinnati in the US, two soap makers. William Proctor and James Gamble, Proctor and Gamble, decided to enter business together. While soap had historically been made from redded pork fat, Proctor and Gamble decided to create a new type of soap from vegetable oils. Now, around the same time, oil was discovered in Pennsylvania. This is the 1870s. It quickly displaced cotton seed oil, which had long been used for lighting as a fuel source. Now, cotton seed oil was consigned to the status of toxic waste. Or either it was consigned to the status of toxic waste until Procter & Gamble realised that unwanted cotton seed oil could be used to produce soap. Bear with me. It gets worse. The oil could be chemically altered via a process called hydronation. How often have you heard of hydronated vegetable oils? And it turned solid cooking fat that turned it into solid cooking fat that resembled lard. That's how an oil formerly classified as toxic waste became an integral part of our Western diet. Wait for this. In the late 1940s, a small group of cardiologists who were members of the still somewhat new American Heart Association received $1.5 million in donations from Procter & Gamble. You imagine how much $1.5 million was in 1940 and had sufficient funding to grow its national profile as a physician's organisation dedicated to heart health. They were then quick to endorse industrial seed oils, more kindly referred to now as vegetable oils, as a healthier alternative to traditional animal fats. Where does, this, where does this sound familiar? Around the same time, a researcher named Ansel Keys introduced his lipid diet lipid hypothesis in which he presented data that seemed to link 
create a link between uh, saturated fat, cholesterol intake, and heart disease. Citing animal fats as unhealthy, Keyes instead recommended the consumption of polyunsaturated fatty acids, PUFAs, which preliminary research had associated with reductions in cholesterol and the risk of heart disease. Keyes' conclusions were in line with the industrial seed oil industry motives that to get people to eat more seed oils. Soon ads for heart-healthy margarine, another form of vegetable oils, and other seed oils became commonplace and healthy. However, Later, Key's hypothesis was flawed and discovered he and ultimately discredited as what he'd done was cherry picked the research. Maybe heard this before. And with his ties to the sugar industry, <laughs> helped further exaggerate his claims against saturated fat. Soon, the entire industrial wor world was using vegetable oils and deeming and demonizing animal fats. Now. This happened a lot in the 1970s. I remember because my father had high cholesterol and he went on the Pritikin diet. I don't know if you all remember the Pritikin diet, which was, <gasps> God, it was just like, that was the hardest thing ever. But my parents stopped having butter and began having margarine and using sunflower oil, sunflower oil, soil oil to cook, stop using saturated fats. Now, at the same time in the 1970s, we also believed there was nothing wrong with sugar. There it is. Now, here's where I want you to put you as the wise women to put all this together. What are the restaurants that have remained open during this thing over the last 19 months? Well, so many other restaurants have had to close. What are the main ones that have remained open? The big um, takeaway food stores that sell, let's go back over this again, processed meat, refined carbohydrates, chips, all cooked in seed oil. So what's happening is that while we are fighting a virus at the same time if you watch tv and if you I know many of you don't but if you do you will notice they'll talk about mm, 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 you know and you know you know and that you know and no no blah 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 over and over again i think we watched we had an sbs running the other night and they must have said this word i don't know 20 times in five ten minutes then the ads that follow are the ads for the major takeaway food stores Holy cow. So while the you can imagine the money that's being spent on advertising at the present time. Do you remember when we were younger, uh, maybe 20 years ago, remember the banana ad? Na 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 make your body sing. The banana ad. You don't see that anymore. We don't see ads for healthy eating anymore. We don't see any of that. All we see is ads for food companies promoting foods that contain refined carbohydrates, industrial oils, and processed meat. So while we're gaining that visceral belly fat by eating it, and heaven help us if we have children, I mean, I, I you know, it's kind of, this all fell into place today. I thought, oh, I never put two and two together with my kids. You know, they want to go to McDonald's. Like, yeah, we're only going once a week, blah, 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 blah. If I'd only known, if I'd done my own research, well, probably there was no internet then. Gosh, I age myself, don't I? But there was none. And it was like, is it any wonder people are getting sicker? And the solution is this. No, the solution is not this. The solution is eat better. Stop eating industrial seed oil. Stop eating refined carbohydrates. Is it impacts on the visceral fat in the body? which will, if you are hospitalised, increase your risk of hospitalisation up to 132% in ICU. And the stats that um, were brought out last year. So if you want to release visceral belly fat, but you still think, oh, a few handful of chips aren't going to hurt or, you know, that quick you know, can of soft drinks not going to hurt, it is. You cannot release this visceral belly fat while those things are in your diet. 
it is impossible. And you know, all of a sudden, we were, we get our fresh we get we get fresh fish from a place not far from us, and there were lots of people there last night. They also do fried fish, but they, they have a great selection of. Pop. And I said to Jerry, "Do you know I used to remember when that smelt so good? Now I know what's what that food is being fried in, what those chips are being fried in, what that fried fish is being fried in." There's no way I would let that in my body, especially at my age. No way. So I'm going to ask you today, if you want to be truly 100% responsible for your health, go back, stock take, look at the food that's in your cupboards, look at the, this is, you know, at no other time, you know, I've been on the planet over 60 years, um, at no other time is being responsible for what you put in your body so critical. Because if you're over 50 in particular, you know, you're, you're probably going to catch this thing at some point. It's a virus. It's a virus. Of course it's going to, you know, it's a, it's a respiratory virus. We're all going to be, whatever variant comes through next, we're all going to be in some way um, aligned with it. We're going, to, we're going to have it. We're going to experience it. If not us, somebody in the supermarket, whatever, you know, it's not infectious yet or infectious and don't realise they're sick. The thing to do is that you're looking at the foods that help your body fight this. And if you have large amounts of visceral fat, as I said, it's that dense, heavy fat around the belly. If you, you or someone you know is carrying that, you're more likely to experience some adverse, difficult, challenging um, experience with this. And especially, I think, when we look at things that have been called health foods, they buy it. You remember um, the heart tick? I remember that a couple of years ago and we realised that the organisations could actually buy the healthy heart tick to put on their products. They bought it. And we, I, I, we don't know how much of this is bought. We have no idea. The only thing we have is our own minds and our own research. And that's how we make decisions. So when we're talking about releasing that visceral fat, it's really important a couple of things that yeah, while you're doing that, you're increasing your lean muscle mass and increasing your metabolism because that's where your immune system comes from. That's where your energy comes from. It's where strength comes from. So the old fashioned ways of dieting are gone out the window. You know, you do not want to get into calorie restriction. You need nutrient dense foods. Um, and so I encourage you to do your own research. Look at this. Just Google industrial seed oils and Google it. Find out, look at the history of it and how it's the, the process by which they make this stuff is awful. It's heated up to a high um, temperature to get the soil and then it smells so bad they add stuff to it so it smells better and then whack a neighbor along and said healthy vegetable oils mm -mm -mm. and you know share this with people you know who eat hamburgers and chips and think it's okay oh i'm just having it occasionally i wouldn't be having it at all right now i mean in the past probably you know i mind going out for dinner and oftentimes you know you'd get seafood and they always have chips on it and i'd say to Derek, oh I'll share some of your chips with you. Not anymore, baby. Not anymore. We'll make our own. We'll make our own at home. I love doing that. Chopping up potato, um, tossing it in olive oil with basil and thyme and oh, all sorts of um, herbs and spices and baking it in the oven. And it's crisp and it's beautiful. Sweet potato, especially, and parsnips are my, another one of my favourite. And I know a lot of people are buying air fryers at the moment. You can still have them. But be very careful of eating them from some of these big stores because you are just never ever going to release the weight that no longer serves you and, and you know and i keep saying weight but you know what it's fat let's get, get some reality check release that visceral fat i hope today has been um informative for you and some created some questions um and some answers i do want to say we have the stronger leaner lighter program started this week um, great bunch of people in there, great bunch of women. We're on a 12-week journey to do all this, to release the weight, the fat that no longer serves. 
to feel stronger, leaner, and lighter. We're going to be focusing on exercises that increase your uh, lean muscle mass and metabolism. We're looking at mindset stuff with tapping and meditation and, and understanding intuitive eating and informed eating. We spend a lot of time on this stuff because I tell you, this is no longer something you should put off. You, you, you know, we're going to summer now, so our case numbers will drop naturally. But we've got another round coming through. So I, I know where I want to be. I know where I want to be by this time this thing comes through again. It will because look what's happening in the Northern Hemisphere at the moment. Case numbers are going up after the summer. It's in the winter. And poor old Victoria, bloody awful weather. <laughs> no wonder. <laughs> so check it out. Really and honestly, this is a time for you to be 100% responsible for your health. You're the only one that can do that. You're the, you make the decision about what you buy in your house. You make the decision about what food you put in your mouth. And by understanding that, can ensure that you are stronger, leaner and lighter for a very, very long time. I hope today has been informative for you. Let me know in the comments below if there's things that you really kind of went, oh, dear, <laughs> I'm going to choose not to do that. And reach out and have a chat to me if you are interested in the Stronger Lean Lighter program at 12 weeks, taking us right up to Christmas. Woohoo! <laughs> and have that fabulous strength and lean muscle mass and energy ready to get through Christmas and our summer. All right, everybody, have a wonderful week ahead. I look forward to you. I've got a very special guest on next week's program, and I'll be sharing details of that soon. I'll talk with you soon. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for sticking with me, and I will see you soon. Bye for now.